Section 12.3 is all about the law of sines. So we know how to find the area of this triangle because it's a right triangle. So remember, area is 1 half base times height. We have 10 we could use as the height. We don't have the length of the base, but we could find that using right triangle trigonometry. Right? The tangent of 35 degrees equals 10 divided by x. So that means x, or the, the length AC, would be whatever 10 divided by tangent of 35 is. Then we can sub that into our area formula, and we get about 71.407 square centimeters. So that isn't anything new. What is new is, what if we want to find the area of this triangle? That triangle does not have a right angle in it. But we can still use the ideas of trigonometry to help us solve. The key is to drop an altitude, let's say through C, and then that sort of right triangle, if we drop it down, that right triangle is one we can solve using trigonometry. We see 100 becomes the hypotenuse. We want to find the opposite leg, so we'll use the sine function. The sine of 40 degrees equals x over 100. So that means x, the height of the triangle, is 100 times the sine of 40 degrees. And then we'll take that information, we'll sub it into our area formula. Area is 1 half times the length of the base times the height of the triangle. And we see we get about 4,820.907 uh, square meters. So that idea brings us to the side angle side triangle area conjecture. So let's build ourselves a triangle. Uh, let's call it A, B, and C. Note that the side opposite A is sometimes called little a, right? So there's angle A. The side opposite it is line segment A is another way of naming that. So likewise, that would be side length B because it's opposite angle B. And there would be little c because it's opposite angle C. So our conjecture says that the area of a triangle, any triangle, not, not just a right triangle, but any triangle, is 1 half times length A times length B times the sine of angle C, where A and B are any two sides, and C is the angle that's sandwiched between those two given sides. So a couple of examples. Take a minute and sketch these into your notes. Push pause if you need to. Now for that first triangle, triangle A, we see we have 33 and 29. Angle 55 is sandwiched between those two sides. And so we would say that the area for that triangle is about 391.964 square centimeters. For part B, you see 72 degrees is sandwiched between 21 and 38 and a half. And so that gives us an area of about 384.465. And try the last one, number uh, part C there. If you had an answer of 555, you did it wrong. Instead, you used angle 50 where you should have used angle 52, because 52 would form side angle side rather than side side angle. All right, now that brings us to the law of sines. The law of sines says for any triangle with angles A, B, and C, and side lengths, little a, little b, little c, with little a opposite angle A, little b opposite angle B, little c opposite C, the law of sines says the sine of angle A divided by A equals the sine of B divided by side length B equals the sine of C divided by the length of C. As an optional exploration, you could take a look at investigation number two on page 596 in your textbook to see why that works. So then, let's use this as an, 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 uh, an example. Let's say in triangle ABC, AB is 9, BC is 8, and the measure of angle A is 59 degrees. Please find 
the measure of angle C. I would like you to push pause, copy this into your notes, and then we'll work the example together. So we have some triangle ABC. We don't know exactly what it looks like, so that's why I drew a scalene triangle. We were given that angle A is 59, the length AB is 9, and the length BC is 8. And we want to find angle C. What I'm going to recommend first is label the sides by those little a, b, and c. Remember, little a is opposite angle a. So our law of sines says this. We want to find angle c, and we know something about the relationship that angle a and side length a has. So we're actually going to just rule out the sine b divided by b part of the law of sines. We're only going to focus on those two fractions. Sub in the information that you know. You know A is 59 degrees, little a is 8 centimeters, little c is 9, and we want to find angle c. So we'll solve. Uh, cross multiply. You get 8 times the sine of c equals 9 times the sine of 59. We want to solve for c, so we'll divide by 8, and we see the sine of angle c is 9 times the sine of 59 divided by 8. And how do we solve for an angle? We use inverse sine. Inverse sine of everything on the right-hand side of the equation. Now grab the calculator. It's going to be a bit of work. We're first going to do that top piece, 9 times the sine of 59, divided by 8. We're kind of working inside the parentheses and then working our way out. We want the inverse sign of that thing that we got. Most calculators have a, a little ANS feature. It refers to the previous answer. So that would be second, and then I believe it's the negative sign for my calculator. So then we find that C is approximately 74.6 degrees.